Good morning, everyone. This is Dennis DePatty. I am the Senior Director of Strategic Accounts for FreeWave. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the FreeWave webinar, Intelligence into Your Ag Operations Today. Um, presenter will be Greg Corey. He runs our professional services team. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, please add them to the chat and uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions after the webinar. Greg? Great. Thanks, Dennis, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Greg Corey, and I'm the Director of Support for FreeWave. Today, we're going to be talking about accelerating smart ag adoption with the right edge. FreeWave is a wireless manufacturer, and we're going to be talking about how to get insights from the field in smart ag and how we can leverage not only wireless technology, but software processing capability at the edge of last mile networks. To kick off our presentation here, why is it time to evolve? So when we talk about smart ag, we're gonna need to increase our food production by 60% by 2030 to keep up with global demand. The population on earth now is around 7 billion and that's only increasing day by day. We have more mouths to feed and we have more productivity we're gonna need in order to fulfill those needs. Along with this need for an increase in production, we're also going to see market opportunities that evolve around providing agricultural products. So the IIoT, or the Industrial Internet of Things market for smart ag, is expected to be over 20 billion by 2022. And in addition to these market opportunities, we're going to see some optimizations that allow us to farm in new areas where it wasn't possible before. And we're also going to see reduction in expenditures that we would typically spend in smart ag due to having data insights that we were unable to uh, obtain from the field before. In moving to a smarter smart ag uh, system and application, there are a couple key challenges that currently stand in the way of taking this next step in evolution. The first one is having reliable internet connectivity in rural areas. And sorry about that, I got a message here. I'm just gonna mute that over there. The first challenge that we have here is connectivity in rural areas. So internet connectivity um, is a problem for these areas. Sometimes there isn't cell coverage. Um, sometimes there might not be high-speed internet access. FreeWave networks serve as the last mile of connectivity. So our systems are often connected to wider area networks. And sometimes those networks may not exist in these areas. The solutions we're gonna talk about for Smart Ag they have um, capability to process information at the edge, and then you can optionally backhaul that to a cloud-based system. So it allows for that flexible type of architecture. The second key challenge is the lack of interoperability across ag tools and platforms. So currently there are a lot of software uh, solutions that are siloed in that the protocols are proprietary and you're not able to obtain that data in those siloed systems across multiple platforms. So this non-sharing of data um, acts as an obstacle when we can't see insights in different platforms. The last point here is that some insights uh, that we do need in order to make better decisions are still inaccessible. And FreeWave solutions solve that problem for last mile of connectivity. When we talk about last mile of connectivity, we talk about the actual data that's in the field that it's still inaccessible due to network limitations. So if we have data that's in a tractor and it's moving and that tractor is not within range of a cell tower, um, if we have a lot of metal equipment in the way, all these physical environmental problems for data collection make that data inaccessible. It's difficult to obtain from the field. 
And when we look at what we're currently getting for data, there are specific industrial data points that are pretty common that you'll see in Smart Ag. And they're really basic such as, is a system running, yes or no? When was the last watering? Should I turn the system off? So really basic input, output, and controls. That's what we currently see in these types of operations. It's estimated that 80 to 95% of data generated by machines is still stranded in the field. So due to those environmental problems I just spoke about, there's a lot of data that's stranded in the field that we're unable to retrieve due to those limitations. Because of those limitations, we're currently getting a really limited data set that we're not truly leveraging for the best operations and efficiency. When we talk about adding smart edge processing to wireless networks, this is the data that we could be getting. So if there's a problem with the system, we could have a data tag for who calibrated that specific system. Maybe they require more training. We can look at longevity. So how long has the system been up? We can trend that uptime and see when there's any downtime. We could run automated tests on the system. We could see when the last watering was. And also we can check the system's efficiency. Lastly, security is becoming a hot topic in an interconnected world. So we might wanna run a security audit on a system we have. And all of these data points rely on getting more data from the field. How we do it is using industrial wireless hardware. So the ZoomLink platform that is pictured here, that is an industrial wireless 900 megahertz radio. That allows you to achieve that last mile of connectivity to field devices. And freeway wireless hardware is an, enabled in a number of form factors. So we have uh, board level, we have smaller board level for OEM applications. Um, FreeWave is pretty flexible in our product offering for different types of scenarios there. The interfaces that we can support in order to make all these data connections, we can do serial, we can do ethernet, we can do both. FreeWave has been in business for over 25 years, so we do have multiple frequencies. So 900 megahertz is the most common we'll see in the US and Canada, and that's because it is unlicensed. It gives us a fair amount of obstacle penetration, so it's gonna go much further than traditional Wi-Fi technologies. Moving down the list here, we also offer a license solution in the 455 range, and that allows for greater obstacle penetration and more output power. For international markets, we also have wireless hardware modules that are in the 2.4 gigahertz range, and that allows us to operate in countries that may not support the 900 megahertz protocol in that there probably is a, a cell system that is already operating on that frequency. So FreeWave has a pretty comprehensive product portfolio to make these data connections for the last mile of connectivity, regardless of the interface, regardless of the form factor, and also regardless of where you may be operating in SmartAg in the world. In addition to offering industrial wireless hardware, we also have an application environment that is embedded on our radios. So in a traditional, what we call a SCADA radio, it's about just putting data in and out over a wireless connection. And when we're talking about 900 megahertz, you could see the last mile of connectivity, that being one mile, and you could see up to 10 or 20 miles as well, depending on the terrain and antenna selection. So industrial radios have been around for some time. FreeWave has taken the next step in the evolution of an industrial radio in that we're adding software processing capability to the edge of these networks. So they're no longer just a terminal for data. They can interact with that data. They can make decisions. They can store data. Think of the IQ application environment as the smart radio of the industrial radio world. The 
IQ environment for running software is part of our edge ecosystem. And that ecosystem includes wireless connectivity, as I've been talking about. It includes edge sensing capability, and it also includes the software that you can run at the edge of these networks. So we have a number of software partners that we work with. You can also develop your own software and load it onto this industrial wireless hardware. As I mentioned, these radios are considered the smart radio of the industrial radio world. Uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago, we only used our cell phones for sending and receiving calls. That's all they did. And that was similar to what we did with industrial radios. Now, when we pick up a phone, we're running applications, we're ordering pizzas. It's less about the hardware and more about the software. And Freewave is looking to bring that evolution to the industrial radio world. The hardware is important, but the real advantage is when you start running software on these communication devices. When we have wireless connectivity, and we also have that edge processing capability, we enable a few different things. That first category is preventative maintenance. So if we have a specific industrial part that has been shown to fail after a certain number of runs, we can send out a technician or order a part because we have that data point available. If there's a tag for when that part was installed, we can see on a live view how many times that part has been used and then proactively ensure that we have a replacement and also a technician ready to make that swap out. On the server side with predictive analytics there, when we have sensors that are connected to machinery and we're able to backhaul that data using that last mile of connectivity, we can then run analytics on those data points to see what efficiencies we can eke out of each system there. And in certain scenarios there, we see a 1.2X increase in equipment efficiency when we leverage that type of sensor data that had previously been stranded in the field. Lastly is our process optimization. So as I mentioned there, if we're installing new equipment, we have a data tag and who installed that equipment. And if we're having a problem with that specific type of sensor installed by a certain technician, you know, maybe that employee requires more training. Maybe we need to go back to the vendor to see why this certain batch of sensors was having problems. It's all about optimizing these different processes. In powering precision agriculture, let's take a look at the big picture here. So here are a number of different FreeWave applications. So we have remote take, excuse me, tank monitoring. And in the field there, there are a number of tanks when we talk about agricultural operations. Maybe it's a, a watering tank, maybe it's some type of chemical or fertilizer that we're using. So we need to know the level of that tank at all times. We also might require data connectivity for video surveillance. So maybe we wanna see a license plate number or something like that that approaches the property. When it comes to precision steering there, FreeWave does a number of applications for RTK and that's for GPS correction. So those auto steer tractors, some of them are under like two inches of tolerance for being able to steer a piece of equipment. And that's enabled by using FreeWave radios that triangulate GPS systems there. In the real-time storage monitoring, we can monitor the status of a hatch so we can see if something has been open or closed. You can also check if there's a certain level in a storage tank there. Um, moving to the precision fertilizing, so we can measure the amount of output of a specific type of fertilizer and make sure we have that in stock on the back end. We can make sure we're applying the right amount. And all of these small inefficiencies, when corrected, add up to a significant cost savings. In irrigation there, FreeWave does a number of applications with center pivots. 
So if you've ever been on an airplane and seen those large circles across the uh, the Midwest, those are all center pivots where there's a center with an arm that moves around it to water a specific type of crop there. So those can be monitored and completely automated. We can know the location of that arm in the center pivot. We can control watering on it. Um, we can also look at soil sensors to see if that actual watering is being effective and so on. In other applications here, you're looking at similar uh, industrial data points in that we might want to track the movement of cattle or the movement of a tractor and not just steer it, but actually see where it is on a map. And then also there's some weeding applications that can be empowered by similar wireless technologies. All right, moving on to the intelligent edge here. So in the upper left-hand corner, we want to future-proof our operations. And what we mean by that is in the industrial radio world, in the wireless world, you can buy hardware that serves as that connectivity link between devices, but is that hardware going to serve you for your needs of tomorrow? So as we gather more data, as we need more software, you're gonna need a scalable solution that can evolve with these different software platforms. So in purchasing pre-wave wireless hardware, you're not just buying a traditional industrial radio, you're buying a platform that has the ability to run software. And when you have the ability to run software, you future-proof your application in that it can grow with the needs of tomorrow. In the bottom left-hand corner here, the infrastructure we have available can be built upon with FreeWave solutions. So if you already have a, let's say a cell connection or, or even maybe a fiber connection somewhere, FreeWave networks often interface with those types of mediums. And when we do that, we can enable the sensor to cloud topology in that you can pull data from the field and publish it to the cloud. You can also publish data just on the edge, store it, make decisions locally. The topology is completely flexible. In the upper right-hand corner here, we have programmability. So as we mentioned with the software at the edge there, so by gaining programmability, again, we can future-proof our solution and you can untie yourself from those proprietary protocols. There are a lot of different industrial protocols that we see in the field, and those protocols can be intercepted, they can be transformed, um, they can be converted to different protocols. Using software at the edge really decouples those siloed solutions that we talked about earlier there. In summary here, for all the things we've talked about and on this slide as well, it's all about making operations smarter. So when we expand these capabilities, we can get data faster, we can analyze that data, and we can make decisions using this entire end-to-end -end solution. So why are these solutions needed? And some of these points we've already touched upon. So the first one is we need to foster interoperability. So in those siloed solutions, there's a lot of proprietary protocols uh, at play there. So in order to evolve in the smart ag space, we're gonna need to be able to move to a more open platform that allows different services to exchange data easier. And we do that using a protocol called MQTT and message query telemetry transport is an internet of things protocol that decouples the data language from the actual hardware so traditionally each piece of industrial hardware has had a specific protocol that's associated with it but by leveraging software we can encourage interoperability by making a standard protocol when we're transporting data there that allows you to upgrade existing systems without having to change hardware. If you have an obsolete hardware device in the field and it runs a proprietary protocol, instead of having to invest in new hardware for the entire field, 
you could drop in a wireless module with edge processing capability. That wireless module will interrogate that older hardware for data. It will convert it to the newer format for easy cloud publishing and then send it back through the network there. Secondly, we need to create data transparency. So the siloed solutions we talked about are a thing of the past. We need to be able to access data anywhere, anytime, as long as it's being secured properly. And using the software at the edge creates that data transparency in that we're serving that sensor to cloud topology. You can store data at the edge of the network, you can store it in the cloud, and using a number of networking technologies, we can ensure that everybody has access to that data. Thirdly, um, we can enable new business models. So this is a solution that's needed. There are a number of consulting companies out there, data companies that can look at different data points from the field, whether it be fertilizer application, um, climate patterns, soil sensor data, new businesses can be built around those data points when we're able to retrieve them from the field. So once we get those data points, companies can use that data to provide new services that were impossible to provide before due to that lack of data. All right, here we're gonna take a look at some actual return on investment in some use cases here. And in this slide, we have a diagram um, that shows some use cases from a, an orchard in Florida here. So in this example, this is a large orchard with over 3,000 acres, and that had been running on a simple timing loop uh, for watering just watered at a specific time and when it was being watered when it was on or off or what the actual soil moisture was um, all those data points were unavailable by using a free wave solution we enabled wireless connectivity to those sensors and then we were also able to run some logic at the edge of the network there so instead of just running on a basic timing loop we were able to only water when the specific moisture level drops by those sensors. So water conservation is obviously becoming a big issue, especially out in the West in Colorado where our office is located. So anytime we can automate, optimize uh, water usage, there are huge benefits in doing so, not only to the bottom line of a business, but also to the environment itself there. And in this example there, we were able to reduce energy costs by 50% by using these smarter decision points. Moving on to our next slide here for center pivot irrigation. So as I mentioned before, center pivot irrigation is commonly interfaced with free wave hardware there. So in center pivot, we have a Freewave industrial radio that's located at the tower point there. There are a number of sensors that are located on the arm uh, of the center pivot irrigation piece there. We're looking at the movement of the center pivot arm. We're looking if there's any faults detected. So in each of the towers in a center pivot setup, there's a sensor to make sure that each motor is doing its job and pushing that arm um, as it moves through the field there. As you can imagine, um, some of these arms are pretty large, uh, maybe a couple hundred feet. So they have multiple motors on there in order to move it at the same time. And there are sensors to tell the actual speed of the motor, the efficiency, and also if that arm is out of alignment due to some type of motor failure. So with these sensors wired down the arm of the center pivot there, you can connect that to free wave hardware. So you can see the actual performance of the entire system, the position of the arm, you can turn watering on or off. Uh, you can also look at soil moisture sensors and do processing right on the edge and a number of other things. 
Should also be noted that FreeWave wireless networks can be integrated with Wi-Fi, LoRa, satellite, LTE, fiber connections. So when we talk about industrial connectivity between devices, you have to have the right tool for the right type of job. FreeWave networks um, predominantly serve the last mile of connectivity, as we talked about, but they're commonly interfaced with these other technologies in order to move data across countries, you know, globally, across states, in order to view that data from anywhere. In our next example here, we have a number of equipment devices that you'd see in Smart Ag there. So we have some UAVs, some tractors, and there's different devices and sensors that are attached to these pieces of equipment. We have a number of customers that use FreeWave radios uh, for monitoring tractor movement, for monitoring different sensors on that tractor. And then also, if you're towing uh, something that contains agricultural products, Maybe you want to see how much capacity you have in a certain baler. Uh, you want to see if there's any problems with what you're towing or any other operational efficiencies. Uh, FreeWave radios can offer that type of connectivity. So we can share data from a tractor to a field office location that's maybe one mile, maybe up to 10 miles, um, depending on the topology there. We also share data in smaller distances. So from a tow along behind a tractor to a tractor or between two devices in the field there. So as we mentioned there, you can integrate a number of different types of networking technologies, but the real beauty of FreeWave is the flexibility in what we can obtain from the field. It's not about, you know, do you have line of sight? Is there a wired connection? FreeWave offers that connectivity and that reach to these hard to get to places and sensors. FreeWave radios are typically the closest thing to a sensor in the field in terms of communication. So in summary here, why FreeWave for smart agriculture? As I mentioned, FreeWave has been around for over 25 years. We've been developing solutions and evolving the technology throughout that time period. We have a pretty complete product portfolio. We're tried and true. We've been tested in a number of in industries, environments, and customer bases. The edge evolved. So I mentioned that, that not only does Freeway provide industrial radio hardware, but we're evolving that to be the smart radio of the industrial radio world. Support is key for a lot of our customer bases there. When we have a network that's down, uh, minutes, hours can cost a lot of productivity. I actually run our customer support group and if somebody calls into our hotline, it's typically under 30 seconds to speak with one of our technicians in North America. So we're very proud of the support that we offer. Um, Obviously, the capability of the products is important, but if you don't have that support backing you up, um, the product really isn't worth much. So FreeWave's value is not only in the product itself, but the support that you're going to get if you have issues in the field. All of our hardware is industrial grade. So we sell radios and then wireless hardware into the military, into oil and gas, water, wastewater. We have systems installed in the Arctic. We have systems installed in the middle of Saudi Arabia. And all of this hardware is tested through a wide temperature range and for mean time between failures there. So reliability is extremely important to our customers. And we've designed our hardware um, with that in mind. A lot of our installation locations are remote in that if there was to be a problem with the product, it would take um, some serious effort to get to that location. And sometimes depending on weather, maybe that location is completely inaccessible. So all of these requirements have gone into the design of FreeWave hardware. Next here, it enhances what you have. 
So we build upon existing systems to offer that last mile of connectivity. We are that last puzzle piece to completing that end-to-end -end solution. So you not don't necessarily need to replace all of the hardware in a network. We can act as an extension of a fiber network, as an extension of a cellular network. Lastly, here in the product category, so future-proofing. So that's really important when we're talking about purchasing hardware for 100 or 200 sites, that is a significant investment in hardware. So when we talk about future-proofing our solution, we want to ensure that we're going to be able to build upon that to add software later on. When FreeWave sells industrial hardware, it typically is in the field for 10 to 20 years. So when you have such a long product lifespan like that, it's important to ensure that it's going to need, meet your needs five years from now, 15 years from now. All right, and that concludes our webinar for today. At this time, I'd like to open it to any questions that people may have. And I'll take a look at the chat window here. Okay, does anybody have any questions out there on today's presentation? Okay, we'll just give it another second here. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat window, so I guess we uh, covered all the topics that we needed to. I wanna thank everybody for their attendance today. And if you have any questions on FreeWave, feel free to contact us. Thanks and have a great day.